Welcome to Disabilities Redefined with Dr. Truett Wagner. I am Dr. Wagner. On this episode, we have Anthony Daniels and his beautiful girlfriend, Kelly Canini. It was actually a very fun show. This young couple, uh, they were amazing. And I actually got to know, I learn, what a man bun is. Check out this little reel. <laughs> <laughs> he had hair on his ear yeah, and it was, really, was tickling something him. Something was really bothering me. I didn't know what it was. I kept like swiping it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys call this little flip thing up here? I, I don't know what that is. This? The man bun. Yeah, the man bun. Yeah, but isn't it like a name or something or does it have like a special? The man bun. Is that really like the yeah. certifiable name for are there oh, wait, legal you know names? The man bun for Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though it was a lot of fun, it was also very, very meaningful. Anthony has battled and won cancer five times. He is definitely a survivor. And when they came to the studio, Anthony had just recently formed the Anthony Daniels Foundation, and that is where the interview started. Ever since I was sick, I always wanted to have a foundation, so I had a surprise party this year uh, for my birthday and my brother Kelly and uh, my friend Max they came together and kind of got it all together so when I was opening up my presents I saw that it was already set so since then I've just been I had to work to get uh, my certifications and licensing for it and all that stuff but basically it's uh, the, the best way to say it is I'm trying to my main focus right now is to uh, f to uh, f change the lives of mm -hmm. children and young adults with cancer to look for a better tomorrow. So on Sunday, we're going to uh, a hospital to give uh, a bunch of Build-A-Bears to the kids with cancer. Just It's an event that I've always wanted to do, something to try to cheer them up on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as it, as it grows and gets bigger, it's nothing... We, I don't envision it being something specific as like giving toys for kids or anything like that. I want for the children or anyone that's young, because the thing is I really believe that people that are sick, they just immediately feel as though they can't really be what they want to be or do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And from having cancer so long, you're constantly being told what you can and cannot do. And I think that really does affect people in a really negative way. And hopefully through the things I've done and through the events themselves, They'll believe that they'll that they will have a future and be able to do what they want to do. And that's to me. I, I want to focus more on the the individual person opposed to just like giving money to cancer research, for example. Not saying that's not a good thing or something that I won't do, but mm -hmm. I'm, I want to try to change their lives as the, the best way I can, so that hopefully one day they'll give back and it's just a cycle so that more and more people can be helped. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. You know, I, I remember, and, and on all of my guests, I always like to do a, a little bit of research. And um, when you said, uh, when I got in touch with you, I said, you know, how can I find out things? And you said, well, all you have to do is Google Anthony Daniels and cancer. And of course, it was a, a very, um, rich mixed uh, of, of articles and videos and, and uh, uh, just media out there, mm -hmm. which I found inspirational already. So um, I did a lot of uh, uh, watching you today. And I do first and foremost, though, want to talk about your attachment, or not even attachment, I want to say, but you're, uh, I guess, living the life of an athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, you played baseball, basketball, and hockey. The main emphasis was hockey. And soccer, too. And soccer. Mm -hmm. But yet, when you, you know, diagnosed with cancer, I, I believe it was the second time, wasn't it? Yes. You started boxing at that mm -hmm. time. Correct. Okay. So what brought up this interest at that time in boxing? Um, well, it, boxing is something that I always wanted to do one and something I kind of dabbled in while I was playing other sports but I never really had time to focus on it um, obviously anyone that's sick has some pent-up aggression or things I have to work through so it was always something that I thought would help me out uh, to get through what I was getting through but more importantly I mean I've never been the kind of person that really likes to be told what I can and cannot mm -hmm. do so I mean uh, almost instantly <laughs> I think like the, the day or two after I was It's told. okay, you can look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I just, I, I don't know. I, it just, it just doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it's just something that I wanted to pick something that I knew would challenge me and would, I wanted to pick something that no one would believe I'd be able to do right. so that when I did it, you know, it was really for the the doctors and the people so that they wouldn't tell someone else that because when they told me that I, I personally was heartbroken from it mm -hmm. I wasn't even heartbroken when I was told I was had cancer but when they said that you know I wanted to cry when I heard that so it was more so I guess at the beginning it was more so to just kind of prove them wrong but it was also for myself and right. I ended up loving it and it ended up being really good for me and it gave me a lot of confidence because you know when you're first sick you just what, what the doctor says is what happens and you know you don't really I was only 20 years old when I was diagnosed so mm -hmm. it was it was difficult to transition from being an athlete and when I was 19 I got hit by a car like a week after I got my scholarship to play in college so it was not even that much time between the accident and when I got cancer so it was still like I felt like I was an athlete mm -hmm. so when I was told that I couldn't be that anymore I guess it just kind of driven me to, to to just do it and I didn't really care that I was sick right and it also kept my mind off being sick yeah that, was, that was the most important thing absolutely for me. that was one of one of the quotes yeah. that I as, as I was you know watching yeah. all these great uh, clips of you you said that um it actually when you were boxing sometimes you would get punched in the face or you would feel the the sweat in your mm -hmm. eyes and it would burn and but you were not thinking about cancer yeah. at the time every time I would I would spar or and I was really in the ring. I never thought that I was sick or anything mm -hmm. like that. So even if it was like a 15 minute relief, it was just 15 minutes of feeling what I consider normal or mm -hmm. whatnot, which was, which is great. Right, but well, that was something that I did want to ask because uh, again, um, you've lived a life as an athlete and uh, when you were diagnosed with cancer, did you feel in any way, and I think you just answered the question, but I just want to verbalize mm -hmm. it just to, just course, to hear, hear, hear your response, but uh, did you feel any way that maybe you were going to lose that part of your identity, you know, being an athlete and that it was, you know, maybe it was going to change you? Or, or how, how did you feel as, as an athlete hearing you have got cancer? Well, I think I thought it was really done, um, not just because of the cancer, but because of the, the car accident. So mm -hmm. I felt like it was kind of like, life telling me that that's that part of your life's over but at the end of the day it's just I, I just made a choice and I don't ever since I was a little kid I played sports right. I don't know how not to you know compete in anything mm -hmm. I'm just a very competitive person right. and it just just for my mental health alone it's really supported me and helped me and it's always I've always chased something in my life, and if I'm not chasing something, I don't like feel whole. Yeah, so that's absolutely. where sports come in. Yeah. Well, I found a little bit of a athlete uh, and, and sportsman in just about every uh, clip <laughs> and article I read about you. Um, that's you, not on purpose. You <laughs> no, I think it's just you it's being just you. The yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, competition. That that was, it was a very competitive. Right. I, I feel a very competitive nature, mm -hmm. which actually is a very positive thing in this situation. Yeah. Because it really has. I think it really has helped. You know, and you're an athlete as well, right? Aren't yeah. you? You're, so soccer is it? Yes. Yes, okay. And do you guys work out together? No. I, no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story, and I tell this to everybody. <laughs> One of our, so when we were first dating, we, we played mini golf, right? Uh -huh. 18 holes inside word to each other. We can't actually compete against each other in anything. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's just so like, what did you do? Who won? We didn't say did, a word. We just say it's a. We just go with it's a, it's a tie. Okay. We'll just leave it yeah, at that. Yeah, but I mean, I have my side of the story. Yeah, and I he have mine. His. So all right. And then so we just you, once we start talking about it, we get like all yeah. riled up again. Right. So we yeah. just say let's yeah. leave it at that. So I'm taking it. You're both two very competitive people. Very competitive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, <laughs> it's it's kind of like a. You know, like one of those indoor indoor arcades, that uh -huh. kind of environment where right. it's supposed to be fun. It's like it's light not. up mini golf. 
18 holes the entire time. It was the beginning of our relationship the entire time. Like we didn't say one week word. Or two. Uh -huh. One yeah. word. <laughs> one word for 18. Think about trying to play mini golf for 18 ball. holes right. and go to word. the next hole. Yeah, and just give each other dirty looks or smile. But we're, you know, yeah. we're on the same team when it comes to, like, making each other better. Yes, um, I was going to say, that probably does, in in most cases, though, work to your advantage, right? Yeah. Yes, we, absolutely. Like, we used to go to the same gym, and he goes yeah. to a different gym now. But, you know, we would see <laughs> yeah. each other while working out. But he has his headphones on, and he's kind of in his own mindset. Uh -huh. and then, she is, too. It's not just me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I found the overriding uh, theme of, uh, you know, athlete being a very, very... Uh, 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 advantageous thing with you. For example, you actually made the statement about chemotherapy. It's a treatment that makes me feel like uh, I'll be Superman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, how did you, how was Superman, how did you get the Superman uh, feeling from, from chemotherapy? I think it was just because you just see people that go through treatment and how they just, it like, you just the life of them is just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So if I would go get treatment, and then that same day I'd go and spar four people. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of develop that kind of confidence that you're really not supposed to do this. You really can't do this, but somehow I'm doing it. So it was like a, it was like a, a very big challenge for me. And because mm -hmm. I was able to do it for all these years, that's, that's why. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that you would have been... Uh, able to, on all levels, physically, mentally, and emotionally, uh, without being such a competitive person? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah, because, just, because it, you've beaten it five times. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think so. I yeah. mean, you never know until it happens, but it, it's really gotten me through a lot of difficult times, mm -hmm. and it's shaped me to be a really strong person because of it, you know, right. not being, it, it's, being so competitive has forced me not to give up in a lot of aspects of my life. Well, you and didn't. That's what I was. That yeah, was what I was. Yeah. You just didn't. You couldn't yeah, give up. It's exactly. almost like uh, I would watch these this footage of you <clears throat> and um, your, your. What was the documentary? I, I loved it. Um, uh, to be strong. To be strong. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing story. Yeah. And what I loved about it was is that it only showed a few clips of you. Uh, being pale and, mm -hmm. and most of it was you boxing and energetic yeah. and active and that was very uh, encouraging for, for, for me mm -hmm. but I, I could I couldn't help but think I'm like this guy just does not know how to give up mm -hmm. and uh, so um, you know I, I heard I, I thought about it down south I don't know if you've heard this uh, phase or not um, uh, uh, saying or not but we say that uh, the, the God doesn't do it, give us anything that we can't handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah and and I was I like, you know, <laughs> so I don't know what he's <laughs> <about> me, but, <laughs> yeah. but you must be one of his favorite people, uh, right? Oh, because yeah, I totally, mean, he obviously yeah. knows you can do <laughs> yeah. just about yeah. anything. I try yeah. to tell myself that to stay sane, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was not an easy uh, diagnosis. Yeah. It, it was uh, what happened. They thought it was. Uh, now this is what I. The, there was a skin problem. Where did yeah. the, this thing with the dermatologist? I was so, very unclear about this. What? Basically, there was a time period where I lost like 40 pounds, but nothing in my life, my lifestyle didn't change. Mm -hmm. So there was no reason for that. And I had this itch, and I don't know if you had, ever had poison ivy before, but it was so intense that I physically would have to scratch myself all over the place, uh, any part of my body. I, I remember being at Fordham and I would sit in the back of the class just so I can take off my shoes and scrape my feet. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what it was. And then I went to a dermatologist one day. Um, it was actually this day, December 22nd. And then I went to the hospital, got a, yeah, got a chest x-ray and they found a 20 centimeter mass in my chest. Mm. And she told me to go get the x-ray three months later. But uh, because my mom who is who she is, she wanted it done immediately. And that was, that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much, the times that I was sick when I knew that it was gonna, when I was gonna relapse, if I started itching, then I would knew that my cancer's, you know, growing inside and stuff like that. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of my cue. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, but yeah. you, yeah, you wanna say something? Oh no, I oh, was just okay. saying, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but where, so where do you stand now, where are you standing now with, with, with you, you were, You've been through your fifth treatment, and I understand you just had to go through another treatment with a, a what, what was it? Something to do with your yeah, back? Yeah, so I had I had radiation on the left part of my uh, L1. It was like a softball tumor, mm -hmm. um, and they just radiated that 
and I get it. I'll get a scan in a couple weeks to see if it's it's not going to completely go away immediately. It's over time, but um, every time I've ever had radiation, everything's gone away. So Perfect. I'm sure, and Good. the pain's not as bad, so I'm sure it's working. Um, the, I would say the main part of my cancer is in my stomach. Mm -hmm. So I have probably like four or five nodules, and just, right now I'm trying to focus on stabilization. And once I get the stabilization, I'll, I'll worry about getting rid of it. But if my cancer is what stayed the way it is right now, I, could, you know, I could live the rest of my life like this. I just gotta prevent it from, right. you know, okay. going all over the place. Now yeah. it was um, you're involved with a few organizations. I believe it was what? What is the delete? Uh, delete blood cancer. Delete blood cancer. Yeah. And it is very easy to what? What was it? The, sw the cheek swap. It's cheek swap. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is not a difficult thing at all to do. No, just okay. seconds. And surprisingly, yeah. it's not like out there, you know, for everybody to know. People are very unaware of it until mm -hmm. they hear of it. Yeah. And well, we I mean, Delete Blood Cancer does a great job absolutely, of you know, getting yes, it out absolutely. there. Absolutely. It's not on TV. You don't see it. So you're like, all I have to do is. It swab my cheeks for 15 seconds yeah. and then send it in. Send it's it so in, simple. and then you're on a uh, you're on a list. Then yeah. is that correct? And mm -hmm. then filling it out is more. You're in the, the registry the for life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but nevertheless, just doing the 20 seconds and then putting it back in the mail. Exactly. Yeah. I also understand it comes with already a, a self-addressed stamped envelope in the yeah. whole yeah. nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll definitely put the, put the uh, information at the end definitely. of the show. That'd be great, uh, thank you. So anybody can hear, and then, of course, your foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, you will have a new, um, uh, I, you, you're highly involved with, with um, Br Bradley Cooper, but you also was just recently in a movie, was it? Uh, uh, what, what was the... You're in acting now, is it? Or what's going on? A new little dimension now yeah, to, the, was, to the life of was, Anthony Daniels. It was fine. My, my, no uh, limits. <laughs> my brother was, he made a film actually about me. Uh -huh. And while we were on set one night around midnight, he sent me a text message asking if I wanted to do a scene with him. Um, this is Bradley Cooper? Yeah. Okay. And like the next week I flew out and I was a delivery boy, mm -hmm. which... Yeah. <laughs> UPS, <laughs> driver, yeah, UPS driver, delivery boy. But you UPS knew Bradley driver. Cooper before, right? Yes, you you yeah. knew him before. Mm -hmm. You you got what what was the 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 you so, worked together to raise funds? Yeah. So pretty much what happened was after I became a an ambassador for Elite Blood Cancer, and I mm -hmm. spoke at their annual gala a few years ago. And after the gala, I spent a lot of time with the the woman that runs it. Uh, her name's Katarina Harf, and. We stayed at the Greenwich Hotel, and during that time, I forgot what film festival, the Tribeca Film no. Festival, so all these uh, actors and actresses were always in the uh, hotel, and one day he was there. So we grabbed a hold of him and asked if he would have a sit down with me, and then one morning I came in, and we had coffee, and I think in the first two minutes, he just wanted to help out, mm -hmm. and then a week later, we went on GMA, and then we built a relationship since then, so that's it's, great. Yeah, really good guy. Well, Bradley's father yes. passed away from pa lymphoma. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so there was that. That was like his yeah. connection that, and his involvement. And yeah. he did the cheek swab, and it, they got a, a bunch of people in the registry because of. They're viewing yeah. on Good Morning America. I, I, I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, you got quite a few people uh, yeah. just from these interviews, yeah. which yeah. was a great thing. Yeah. Yes. Ties. Him uh, supporting delete blood cancer definitely was, definitely helped <laughs> out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've personally have been contacted, I think the number is 204 people have, that donated for me, mm -hmm. have been asked to donate for somebody. Whether it was a success or whatnot, you now 204 people or had the opportunity to get a transplant because mm -hmm. of it. So, that, uh, that's great. Yeah, that's one of those people is my friend from school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She, who's a, who's going to be a nurse? Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. And you know, she was like in tears, just yeah. so happy, like for that opportunity to save somebody's life. These people, you know, their lives are changed. It really is important. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And um, I know that I. I actually went on the website today. I'm going to do it myself, yeah. and I'm going yeah. to take That's it awesome. to my class. I'm going to... Right, the doctor yeah. should just hand them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to yeah. see if you we know? can do yeah. something at the City University of yeah. New York, because, uh, you know, honestly, it was such a... I was, I was... I found it very refreshing how such an important thing could be mm -hmm. such a simple process. Yeah. Yep. So, and as you say, uh, Kelly, it's, it's not out there. You know, right. it really should be. So yeah. that's for the upcoming new year. That's going to be, I think, one of the top priorities uh, mm -hmm. is is to... 
um, get that out there within the City University of New York okay. and, and just see That's what we fantastic. can do. Yeah. But celebrities do help, you know, no, we, we, course, we do. Yeah, and yeah. that was something yeah. that, that as I was, you know, again, doing my homework mm. on you, it was great that Bradley Cooper was, was uh, so eager yeah. Yeah. To, to lend his, his, his name and, and voice right. to it all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was very generous of him. Now, quickly though, with that scene that you have, uh, what happened? You 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 hurt your finger? You cut? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I pulled up on. <laughs> I pulled up with the UPS truck, and I was getting out the door jammed. So when I tried to open it, my hand got stuck in the door. So I'm walking down a hill, and he's meeting me halfway. He's coming out of the garage, and I have a package in my hand, and there's just blood dripping down. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there's like a hundred people around me. And just, right. It was, His first scene it was, ever. Yeah, my first scene ever. <laughs> Disaster. And then when I was walking back to the truck, I was, my brother was like laughing because it's like that's an Anthony Daniels <laughs> moment. <laughs> but you got to go too, right? You were on set as well one day? Or yes, was... I wasn't there for that day. I was uh -huh. there the day after. Right. Yeah. Did, did you all like it? Did you like it being on the movie set? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a really cool experience, and everyone was really just nice. Came right. together. I mean, yeah. it took so long for him to create the movie. Yeah. But we got to see like a little, you know. He just came out of nowhere one day. I got a text message, and like three days later, we had to get tickets. Then we ended up staying at his house, and it was That's just great. Yeah, it was it was cool, and it was right. It was like a day after my birthday. I mm -hmm. found it out, so it was it was a nice week. The the week after wasn't so good, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I got pneumonia the next week, but you know, <laughs> it was, it was you know, well, listen, prior, but, but you hear that. Yes, yeah, exactly. Keep, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing because you're having success at just about everything that, that yeah. comes your way, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now you, just quickly, because we're going to mm -hmm. wind things up, but you yeah. are, now you, you were saying earlier that you're six months, you're here, six, well, what is your so, schedule like? Because you're, you're a pro athlete, so, right. okay. Yeah, so I play in the National Women's Soccer League, so okay. we start February and then we end up end in October. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about six, six months here and there. Away. <laughs> Yeah. Say it again? <laughs> An excuse to run away. <laughs> <laughs> We've managed that. Look, I was going to yeah. say, does he, do, <laughs> yeah. do you go and see her do, as she did with you in the movie? Well, or What's you... actually really ironic is that, so the first year, two years ago, I was on Sky Blue, which is the New Jersey team. Uh -huh. um, this past year, I was on Sky Blue for the majority of the first part of the season, mm -hmm. and then... I actually went to Houston, where he was the year before that, getting a stem cell transplant. That was like eight months. So I visited him when we were in Houston. Mm -hmm. um, well, when he was in Houston, yeah. I visited him, and you know, then I came home and yeah. we talked about never going to Houston ever again. You didn't like it in Houston? Or you <clears> well, just... I mean, you got a stem cell transplant oh, there. Yes. There was just a lot of complications. Right. It's the worst it was a tough time. Yeah. It's really hot there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it was just funny because it was like. She Basically, lived like, I got like a mile from where I lived. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it was really weird. We traded transition. places. Yeah. Right. I was in Houston. Uh huh. What yeah. she called? Uh, like <laughs> Satan's Kitchen <laughs> <laughs> or a Beach House. Yes, yeah. I, I've yeah. never been. I hear it's very hot over yeah. there, though. I usually it like playing yeah. in colder weather. Yeah. Listen, it, well, what's next? We've covered so much. It's been a great interview. I can't thank you guys enough yeah, for coming and sharing this. Yeah. But what 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 what's next? You know, I mean, you're you're playing yeah, soccer. I'm, I'm getting ready for my upcoming my, season. Upcoming and... movie star athlete. So, <laughs> what do you want people to take away from this interview? The both of you. Hmm. That's a that's a good that's question. A loaded question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll do the cheek swab. Uh -huh. Right. That's a good thing to take away. Um, I guess uh, um, I think he has more wisdom. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess really just to just really do whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter what. There's really no excuses for anything. You know, anytime something's thrown at me, I try to figure out what to do, and you know, I don't really let life take control of what I want. Mm -hmm. And I've seemed to have success in, in in it thus far, and I think just by chasing what I want and being what I want regardless about whatever's happening, you know, really will mm -hmm. <clears throat> make you happy. Thank you, Anthony and Kelly. I wish you all the best. The cotton swab test that Kelly was referring to can be found on DKMS.org. Simply go to DKMS.org. You will see uh, at the top of the page a link. It will say register now. Uh, click on register now. At that time, you will go to another page that says register as a donor. And I believe in the middle of the page, it's let's get started and see if you are eligible. 
click on see if you are eligible and it will list a you know, few questions there and the process will begin. So uh, yeah, um, it is a very simple process, but it is also a very, very important process. Once again, I just want to extend a very, very sincere thank you to Anthony Daniels and Kelly Canini. We wish you all the best as you all move forward with your life, your careers, and your continued success. If you out there watching would like to know more about Anthony and his story, he also has a documentary entitled To Be Strong, which can be found on YouTube. So check it out. All right, it's been a great show, and thank you for watching. See you soon.